Yeah, I start with agenda. Unified bridge systems. Carlos, we're ready. Yeah. Oh, as I am. Carlos, we're ready. Ready, Carlos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Eagle Pass uh, Bridge Systems Board of Trustees special meeting. Friday, September 15, 2023, Atopia City Council Chamber at City Hall, Eagle Pass, Texas. Um, establishment of quorum, citizen recognition. If you want it, to just read out the names of the people here for quorum. I read out the names of the people that are here? Oh. Okay, Mr. Mario Escobar and Mr. Jesse Sandoval. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You know, establishment of cor of quorum, Citiz citizen recognition. No citizen recognition. If you want to I didn't read, read that off. Read, read number one. Oh, recognition of former EP Bridge System Board of Trustee. On cue. No, on cue. Hey, how are you, Mr. Noel? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Y eso que no es stepping down. Y sí, le vamos a dar de. Ya, me van a dar la patada. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez, welcome. Uh, Thank you. On behalf of the Eagle Pass Bridge System and the Bridge Board, we uh, wanted to recognize your service to the Bridge Board. We are very grateful for your dedication and contribution to the board. Uh, we understand your term uh, has come to an end, and, and, and you know we have to bring somebody in, and we welcome. Mr. Jesse Scacho Sandoval, uh, no stranger to the city of Eagle Pass or the bridge system. Um, he, he joins us as the new uh, member. But before we, we let uh, Mr. Uh, Noe go, we did want to present you with a token of appreciation on behalf of the board and the bridge system. So if you don't mind stepping down here, everyone, so that we can go ahead and present this to him. And, this, and I'll just read out this plaque here before we take a, a, a picture with you. It says, uh, with our greatest appreciation, we hereby present Mr. Noe A. Rodriguez for your dedicated service and support to the Eagle Pass International Bridge System. Bridge Board Trustee Member from 2019 to 2023. So, thank you very much, Mr. Noe. Thank you. Thank you. And let's go ahead and... Just one, right? 
Listos? Mm-hmm. Okay. New business? Start from there? Okay. Oath of office to newly appointed member. And Mr. Sandoval uh, was administered the oath before the meeting started. So okay. you can move on to Selection of chairperson. Any nomination for chair? Uh, um, for sure, I'll nominate Mr. Uh, Ms. Kawhi. Okay, I'll second. Okay. So all those in favor? Okay. No selection of vice chair? Nominate Mr. Elpando to remain as, as chairperson. Second? All, right. mm-hmm. all in favor? Mm-hmm. And then minutes. Approval of minutes for the August 17, 2023 meeting. Uh, and then somebody has to approve. I move to approve the minutes for the August mm-hmm. 17th, 2023 20, meeting. As second. First. Anybody second? One second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Monthly reports, financial report for the month of August 2023. Yes, so first and foremost, congratulations, Mr. Scoha. You're our new chairman. And Mr. Elpando, you remain as our chair. And I also want to welcome Mr. Jesse Scacho Sandoval. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, he's no stranger to the City of Eagle Pass. We think he is going to be a valuable member to the Bridge Board, and we look forward to working you to continue to bring improvements to the City of Eagle Pass International Bridge System. With that being said, um, our finance report is looking great. Um, total revenues for the month of August 2023 were 1,600,968. Uh, this represents an increase of 200,469 or 14.31% from fiscal year 22 revenues during the same uh, period. Um, so that, that just means that our growth continues to show in our revenues. Um, overall, we have an 8.26 favorable variance compared to what budget estimates for revenue for the first eight months of, of the year, of the fiscal year uh, were projected. So this is great. We continue to be aggressive and we continue to uh, promote our Port of Eagle Pass and uh, attract more and more traffic to cross through here, and the numbers uh, show it. So we're in great uh, in great standing financially, and we look forward to continue to grow and, and continue to bring more and more revenue uh, to not only improve the bridge system, but to help the city of Eagle Pass. So uh, with that being said, I'll leave it open if there's any questions in regards to that, um, but uh, pretty much in, in a nutshell, we're doing, we're doing great with our revenue. Okay. Uh, traffic route report for the month of August 2023. Yes, yeah, so like I just mentioned, uh, we can see the traffic increase continue. Um, for non-commercial vehicles, we had an increase of 10.28%, uh, 253,598 in 2023 in comparison to 2, 229,958 in 2022. Our commercial trucks, uh, which is our, our, our biggest uh, service type that we're trying to increase here, uh, being that we have the biggest window uh, of, uh, to, to, to increase capacity, right? That's our biggest uh, opportunity to increase capacity without affecting the flow of traffic. Uh, commercial trucks, we had a total of 19,047 uh, in comparison to 17,958 in 2022, an increase of 6%. So we've been seeing anywhere from five, 10, 15 to 20% on a month to month basis. So that's just great. Uh, buses, those continue to increase. We had 826 compared to 604 last year. That's an increase of 36.75. And pedestrians, we had a total of 34,056 in comparison to 28,101. That's an increase of 21.19%. So uh, we obviously see increases in, in our major traffic types and we continue to uh, promote the port to continue keep this trend going. Uh, you believe because it's because it's because of the signs and all that promotion that you've been doing. Yep. Uh, you know we 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 know that there's natural growth with everything. Yeah. But uh, our, our aggressiveness and and being trying to be uh, participating in more events and and promoting putting out advertisements, uh, all of that is is also contributing to this growth. So we'd like to say that our hard work is paying off. It definitely, as you can tell.
Parking lot report for the month of August 2023? Yes, so our parking lot report for the month of August, we brought in a total revenue of 9,676. Uh, I'm sorry, that was in 2022. We did see a small, uh, a significant decrease in that. Unfortunately, our equipment at the parking lot has begin, began to fail more than we were used to. So when that happens, we typically have to leave the parking lot open for free for the people that are trying to park. Uh, and we see that reflect here in this report. We brought in a total of 7,507. That's a decrease of $2,169 compared to last year. Um, I am happy to say that we did get uh, the budget approved uh, this last council meeting. And part of that budget included uh, the replacement of the parking system. So as soon as a new fiscal year kicks off, our plan is to uh, bring in a new uh, parking system that's more reliable and, and, and will avoid having these kinds of issues that we see with the existing one. So outside of that, that's uh, pretty much uh, th uh, it for that report, unless there's anything in specific that we want to discuss. Other business? Yes, so I'm just gonna step over here and to talk about the other business. Does he have to read? Okay. Discussion and possible action recommending the city manager adjust the toll free temporarily to cover additional operation expenses due to significant increase of traffic to maintain bridge one open 24 hours and Paisano rest stop operation. The fee, the fee shall not be increased more than 25% of the approved toll rate for a specific period of time. Yes. So. Uh, what this what this item is about is uh, we want to make a recommendation to the bridge board and, and I believe there was there's a little miswording on there. Uh, what we're asking to do is we're asking to make an amendment to the existing toll ordinance for the uh, City of Eagle Pass International Bridge System mm -hmm. to allow city manager to have the discretion to adjust tolls as necessary to cover additional fees that are uh, incorporated due to the increased volume of traffic. Uh, we're talking um, specific events where traffic is significantly greater than what we expect and uh, which requires us to uh, either add personnel or have to expand the hours of operation to be able to uh, expedite this traffic through the Port of Eagle Pass without causing uh, too much disruption within the city. So this, this amendment would pretty much give city manager the discretion at the bridge system's recommendation to adjust the, toll, uh, the existing total schedule uh, by no more than 25% of what the existing schedule uh, is, of what the existing approved schedule is. So in this case, 25% uh, would mean the total rate is at $4 uh, we, we could not, not increase it more than a dollar, right, 25% of the mm -hmm. $4. Um, that doesn't mean that we would increase it the dollar, it just means we would do our analysis and to see about how much exists, more traffic we're getting, uh, what we would need to do to facilitate that traffic through here, and uh, part of the plan that we, what we want to do with, with this additional revenue is uh, maintain bridge one open, and uh, in, in this particular case, or this particular scenario that I'm gonna share with you, uh, for the paisanos, uh, do a paisano rest stop for them when they, uh, they come at, at the end of the, of the year. Uh, we do wanna leave this open to where we can do this for other holidays. Uh, you know, we have Easter, July 4th, Labor Day. You know, there's a lot of holidays that we know uh, uh, ahead of time that we're gonna have additional traffic, so, what we want to do is we want to be able to recommend to the city manager and ask them if, if it's okay for us to increase this toll so we can maintain bridge one open and we can get people through the Port of Eagle Pass as quickly as possible. So I'm sure you guys are going to have questions about this, but what I want to do is let me go ahead and just present a scenario where this particular ordinance would take place if it does get approved. So we have here what's the bridge system, variable tolling, holiday and special event traffic increase. Um, so for in this particular instance, we're recommending open bridge one 24 hour operation, open for a total of 20 days. Um, that would be from December 20, 20th, 2023 through January 8th, 2024. Um, the US Customs and Border Protection reimbursable overtime cost just to keep the bridge one open 
those 20 days would be 75,750. Um, unfortunately, uh, the U.S. Uh, Customs and Border Protection do not have the personnel to be able to maintain Bridge One open uh, 24 hours. So any extra hours that they remain open, their customs agents have to be paid through the reimbursable overtime. Uh, the city has participated in this in the past, or the bridge system has done this in the past. It's just been a while since it's been done. Um, so that this right here would be uh, maintaining open those 20 days to ensure that that increased traffic that we see at the end of the year, people going to Mexico for you know Christmas or for the new year, this would help get them through uh, bridge one on a 24 hour basis. Um, typically, we see the increase of traffic begin from two or three in the morning. And when that happens, they only have one bridge to cross through, right? That's bridge number two. So what tends to happen is the traffic starts to build up, not only at bridge two, but at bridge one, because people are waiting for 7 a.m. for it to cross, for them to cross. Um, and that's why, you know, when people wake up, whatever the next day is, they'll find that the traffic is all the way backed up to HEB or, or beyond that, right? And, and it really becomes a, a, an impact, a negative impact to our, to our community, right? So by us proposing this, we stay open at Bridge One 24 hours, and uh, as soon as traffic starts to increase, we'll be able to, to get them through. And uh, our, our goal is by the time morning comes, we have most of the traffic through and uh, the, the impact is minimal to our citizens. Uh, so this, this is just one example of how would, if this uh, ordinance amendment goes through, how, would we, how we would present to city manager and saying, hey, this is what we're trying to do, and uh, we would need this to do it. So then I'll get into it. Uh, the other thing that we want to also propose is uh, the Paisano rest stop, and we're proposing uh, implementing that from December 20, 2023 to December 23rd, 2023. Uh, this would be a 24-hour operation, and the approximate cost for, for this, we've never done it, we're using this approximate cost based on our discussions with Laredo, would be about $25,000. Uh, it would require things such as a tent, portable restrooms, generator, portable lights, snacks and beverages, and of course, personnel. So this is another initiative that we're trying to, to we're, we're marrying from Laredo to where they have a Paisano rest stop where the Paisanos can stop, they can give proper directions on where to go. Our plan is to have the migración from, uh, from Mexico there so they can help them with the permitting process to make their, their crossing a lot more efficient uh, so they don't have to wait in line here and then wait in line in Allende or, or here in, in Piedras Negras, right? So uh, our goal is to try to improve the experience of, of our paisanos when they cross through here. And uh, it, they've been doing this 30 years in Laredo and it's worked work for them, so there's no reason why it shouldn't work for us. Unfortunately, it does come with a cost to it, and uh, we're proposing uh, using this temporary increase in total to, to also uh, pay for this. Uh, so the funding mechanism, right? This is what we're here uh, uh, to, to, to try to get approval or a recommendation from board so that city council can approve uh, this this amendment to the ordinance. Uh, so the temporarily, we were, we're proposing temporarily increasing the toll fee by 50 cents for non-commercial cash customers only. So that would be just passenger vehicles uh, and for cash paying customers only. So that would mean the express card would remain where it is now so that those users would not be affected. Um, and it, it will also help uh, for us to promote and to add more express card users and push, uh, continue to push more for Bridge One becoming a cashless uh, operational bridge. So uh, we're proposing increasing just for non-commercial cash customers, a uh, total of 50 cents, and uh, we would put a start and an end date to it. Uh, this is not gonna be one of those where it's temporary, you forget about it, and it, it becomes all of a sudden permanent, right? Our goal is to be transparent and present a start and an end date. So for this particular case that we're discussing, uh, it'd be a temporary total increase date range from December 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2023. So a total of 30, of 30, uh, 31 days there. Do you have a projection on how much? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm about to get to this. Uh, so, and uh, the approved total schedule would return January 1st. 
So we'll have a timetable. As soon as that timetable is over, everything goes back to normal and the tow fees re re return to what they are now. So the expenses versus the projected revenue. So I did go over the projected expenses, total, total expected cost to efficiently expedite in, increased seasonal traffic, uh, 100,750. Uh, the total expected proje projected revenue increased based on the 20, on 2022 December traffic, 108,921. So as we know, we can't predict the future. We're assuming we're gonna have the same amount of traffic we had last year. It could be more, it could be less. So it's kind of a risk we're taking. Uh, as you can see, we were giving ourselves a, an $8,000 window there to, to hopefully, you know, we do have the same or maybe even more. Uh, but we feel like with making this increase in the, in the toll, it will provide us the, the funding that we need to take care uh, of these proposed, uh, these two proposed projects that we have. Um, the benefits of, of, of doing all this, uh, it'll be a faster crossing to both Mexico and the United States. So we understand there the people that cross from here to Mexico, uh, most of the time will want to come back or the people crossing from Mexico to Eagle Pass will want to cross back to, to Mexico. Um, and we want to make sure that they can go and come when they please as fast as possible, right? We don't want for the lines of the bridge to dictate whether you can go to Mexico or you can go to the U.S. And I think keeping this bridge open those 20 days will give us a real good uh, example of how our uh, traffic fluidity would be much more better if we had both bridges open uh, the 24 hours. Uh, reduce the traffic congestion within city limits. And I just left it at city limits because it's going to go both ways. We're going to help Eagle Pass and we're also going to help Piedras Negras. Uh, the incentive to cross through the Port of Eagle Pass, the, the better experience that we give our customers, the more they'll want to come back through here, the more they're going to do uh, word of mouth, tell their friends, hey, I crossed through Eagle Pass, it was super quick. Mm -hmm. uh, they have both bridges open 24 hours, you know. We the want that, stuff. Yes, we want that to, for that to, to, to continue. We want to continue to grow, and we feel like this is going to give them an incentive to keep crossing through here. Um, and then the last one that, that uh, we, we, we certainly want uh, this to serve as a pilot program for CBP to consider the permanent bridge one conversion to a 24 hour operation funded by the federal government. So we kind of want to be the ones to kind of kick this off, but eventually our plan is to pass that over to them and say, okay, we've, we've tried it, we've seen that it works, we've seen the benefits that it brings, so now we need the federal government to, to take on this responsibility and maintain it open 24 hours without it costing our customers or the City of Eagle Pass and the National Grid System. So in short, that's pretty much what we're presenting. What we're presenting to the board is to get, a rec uh, get an approval to uh, take this back to City Council for, uh, and, and, and a recommendation to allow us to, to uh, implement this ordinance amendment to where moving forward, if we want to implement something such as what I just presented, you know, that, that the city manager has the discretion to temporarily increase it, like I said, providing that it doesn't go over 25% of the, of the approved toll schedule, and that we have a start and end date to the temporary toll increase. So uh, I, I, I'll entertain any questions that y'all may have, but in a nutshell, that's that's really what, we're, what we want to do here moving forward. Okay. Sir, is Mexico uh, in, in line with what we're trying to do here, with 20 days? We have discussed several options um, with, the, with, with our counterparts in Mexico. Um, what we were trying to do first and foremost is get the, the U.S. side on board. They are on board with, um, with keeping Bridge One open. Uh, our, our schedule is being quite aggressive. Um, I know that they're willing to support us, but what we want to do is once we get approval on our side, uh, then present the calendar days. Uh, we have planted the seed with them and we are going to set up a meeting, but we wanted to set up a meeting with them after we know that we're okay to move forward on our part. Uh, so to answer your question, yes, they are on board with it. We just need to finalize the details regarding the, the, the time frame that we would remain open. 
I'm hopeful and I'm pretty confident that they will see the benefits that we see and make an effort to make sure that we stay open the 20 days that we're proposing. One more question. I think there, there's a looming uh, uh, a strike here in the United States in Detroit, the, uh, the, auto, the, auto, industry. Industry. the auto industry. Mm -hmm. uh, would that affect the plan in any way, shape, or form? I, I don't know how long it probably would take to resolve or anything like that, but in the decrease in traffic, trucks, uh, maquiladoras sending stuff over, you know. No, I, 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 right now, that's just, you know, something that's going on over there. I don't foresee it trickling down all the way over here. We're hopeful that they'll take care of it there before it starts to impact anywhere else. Uh, but it's something that we will continue to monitor. But as far as I'm concerned, we, we feel like it's not gonna, it's not gonna be get to the point where it's gonna affect affect the Port of Eagle Pass. When, when did you come up with this? When did the system come up with this? You guys, with this plan? This plan? Well, we've actually been working on this plan for for quite some time uh, with the, with the other agencies in Mexico. Uh, but we finally came to the conclusion that uh, it's gonna take someone to to take that first step to to keep a CBP. Uh, operational before we can ever even consider Bridge One staying open. So this is kind of just us uh, taking the initiative to do what we have to do to keep Bridge One open. So not only CBP can see the benefits, but our entire community, right? So so we're, we're that's pretty much what we're doing. We want to take the first step and then go back to CBP and say, you see how well that works? You Possibly know, it, open it, the it, doors. It'd be, a, it'd be great if we could start doing this more, yeah. but rely on them to take care of the, the increased hours of operation, not so much us. Yeah. Okay, yes, sir. On that Pasano, Pasano station, where are you guys going to put it? So right now we're debating what, air, what, what location we would want to put it. Um, one location that has been brought up, and uh, we're still pending uh, getting with the school district on that, but we were considering the SAC since it's on the outside uh, area of, of the city and it connects directly to Loop 480. So that would be a great location for it. Uh, we can have the paisanos come in to, they have the space with the, with the huge parking lot. Paisanos would come in there, and then from there we would direct them either, you know, if, if it's, a, it's a passenger vehicle that doesn't have, isn't pulling the trailer, they could come to Bridge 1. If it's a vehicle with pulling the trailer, those vehicles need to be processed through Bridge 2, and uh, we would have direction, uh, directional control there on what bridge they would use. So more than anything, that's, that's what this proposition is for, is to uh, guide the Paisanos through our city where they don't get lost and they're not going back and forth just causing more more uh, disruption to the traffic. So they would get there, we would we would uh, assist them with, with any permitting needs that they need and uh, and then uh, guide them uh, where to go and how to get to bridge one or bridge two. But you won't be checking there you won't be checking them the the stuff they got in there. Nobody in customs gonna be there checking all the stuff. No. They're still gonna stop there at the Bridge yes. Two. So that's something that's something that we we we're, we are going to get with with customs and border protection to see if they they are open to doing that. Uh, the only thing with that is that uh, if they do check them there, um, it's hard for them to say that they won't stop somewhere else. And so so I I don't think it would work to that sense. But CBP can maybe be there to kind of educate or guide them on what they can take to Mexico and uh, or, or what they can bring back from Mexico because we do get a lot of questions from the people going into Mexico. A lot of their questions are, well, what can I bring back, right? They want to know before they buy something over there if they can and if they can bring it back. So uh, our goal is to have both uh, CBP, Aduana, and, and the Inmigración uh, there so that we can educate and, and, and guide the paisanos as they cross through here what they can expect going to Mexico and coming back. Yeah. Bridge manager's report no. update. Okay. Were you going to take action yeah. on the running? Action will move. Yeah. Does anybody want to move on this? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll make the first, I'll make, the, I'll make a motion to approve that. Okay. So okay. Get, second. Does he have to read it? Uh, do I, what do I have to say? Motion to. Motion to approve by Mr. Sandoval. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to approve by Mr. Sandoval. Second. Second, second by Mr. Escobar. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you so much.
sorry I'm such a rookie, guys. That's okay. Yes, I'll say that. Okay. Update on bridge one and two improvement projects. Yes, so just uh, very quickly, I know that item took a little longer than, than, uh, than we're used to, but uh, our, our ongoing projects, everything's going great. Uh, our bridge number two, we expect the completion of that to be uh, late November. That's including the building and the uh, parking lot improvement. Um, I don't know if you guys have passed by there, but the project's moving forward uh, really good. Um, so we're, we're, we're happy about that. Um, we're also finalizing the, the design uh, fee for the PSME for the realignment. And uh, we also got our proposal in for um, the expansion to bridge two, the infrastructure, additional six lanes. So we continue to move forward. Uh, we have Danny McGee, our city engineer here. We're working together to make sure these projects continue to move forward. Um, so it, it, it's good. I know it seems like everything's moving very slowly, but we want to make sure that we're, we're doing our due diligence before we, we move forward with these with these mega projects that are going to be, you know, a game changer here for the Port of Eagle Pass. Uh, in addition to that, I will add this week was um, uh, National Truck Drivers Week, and uh, we we held uh, an event yesterday, uh, providing a small treat and a small gift to our truck drivers that utilize the Port of Eagle Pass. It was a huge success. Our truck drivers were very happy that the Port of Eagle Pass took the initiative to, to give them a little appreciation for, for their hard work and more importantly for choosing the, the Port of Eagle Pass, right? We're extremely happy to service them and we want them to know we appreciate their business. So we did that yesterday. It was a huge success and uh, we look forward to building uh, on this year for future years to come to continue to show our appreciation to uh, to our business customers. Uh, they, they, they are where we see the biggest growth coming here in the future and uh, we want to continue to, to support them and service them and uh, we want them to know we, we truly appreciate them. So outside of that, that's all that I have as far as projects are concerned. I don't know if there's any questions in, in particular to any one project, but I'll open it up. No, sir. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Wonderful. To keep our kids here in Eagle Pass. <laughs>